Well, as it begins to look more and more like winter outside, the winter sports season is picking up. Hello and welcome to Press Row. Joined as always by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Guys, big week in Lima for high school basketball, specifically on the boys' side. Lima Senior coming off a win at Flying in the Hoop over Thurgood Marshall Monday night. Not well, just a win, a complete dismantling yes, of yeah. Thurgood An impressive Marshall. showing. Then go up to Toledo the following night, get a league victory by 40. Now they've got Toledo St. John's at home in what will decide the track, pretty much safe to say. Will they be tested by St. John's? Will they get the win? I think yes and yes. Uh, anytime you play St. John's, you will be tested. Uh, even if you're physically better than them, they'll be prepared and they'll play smart and they'll play hard. You'll have to earn it. But I, I've gone on the record now, this, this Spartan team, they're not going to lose in the regular season. So I've, I've already laid my claim to that, so i got to stick with that. But I, I do expect that they will handle St. John's. And uh, But you got to be ready for Coach Eddie Heinschel. I mean, you don't win six, 700 games by accident. He'll have them fully prepared and uh, lathered up to get revenge. But it'll, they'll have to earn it, but the way Lima's playing right now, I, I figure they'll win the game. My question in this matchup is Rico Stafford, is Ruben Flowers, is Keaton Upshaw ready to take on Vincent Williams, the sophomore big man for St. John. So I think it's playing really good right now. I think that's going to be the type of matchup that maybe the Spartans haven't seen too much this season playing somebody, an athletic big man down in the post. Well, you look at the first matchup, guys, that was the only single-digit victory yeah. mm -hmm. for Lima Senior this year. I mean, as far as them just absolutely blazing teams out this year and what they've done, I think it'll be a very good test at home, and Toledo St. John's is going to be ready for Lima Senior, but, man, the way the Spartans took care of business the, other, the last two nights, really, both Monday night against Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall was out was, without one of their best players. Uh, who was academically ineligible, and then to go up to Toledo and just absolutely thrash a, a very improved St. Francis team compared to what they've been the last couple of years. I think it'll be a great test uh, for the Spartans to get them ready down the line for six days from now. You know, it's interesting how your perception of matchups are through the years. Uh, a team is just a favorite by based on who they are and what's happened in the past, and that was the Lima Senior St. John's matchup until the regional final last year. The Spartans overwhelmed them, got over that hurdle. And then even in the opener this year, everything went St. John's way in their own place. Nobody beats them in the Titan Dome. Well, the Spartans went on a furious rally and beat them late. Uh, the worm has turned in this deal. If anybody's intimidated, if it's possible, it's the Titans. The Spartans are going to win this game. Spartans were down 17 at the two-minute mark in yeah. the third quarter. That was their Came season opener, the right? Season. That yeah. was season opener. So, yeah. And we talked last week about the tough upcoming schedule for both Lima Senior and LCC leading up to the Lima Cup on Tuesday. So far, Lima Seniors passed their first little bit of the test, and if they're going to remain unbeaten, it's two tough games upcoming. Meanwhile, in the Western Buckeye League, and a big one coming up this week, it'll be Ottawa Glendorf against Defiance. Do you think the winner of this game will go unbeaten in the Western Buckeye League? It's pretty much a league title game at this point right now. I think the odds are that, they, that they'll be able to run the table, but I still think this league has a lot of parity to it, and I'm not sure that Defiance and or Ottawa Glanorf is overwhelmingly good enough to just have confidence that they could win out. But I think it's clear that these are the two best teams as of right now, and, and the winner has almost a lock on a co-championship. But I, I think the odds are they're not quite there that they'll be able to run the table. Titans showed me quite a bit last Friday, going down to Shawnee and handing the Indians the first loss in over a month. Shawnee had a seven-game winning streak in OG, no intimidation win, and they really set the tone, dictated the pace of that game, and really won quite handily. I, I liked what the Titans did against Shawnee. Obviously, Saturday taking on Lima Senior, that was a different story for OG, but they head up to Defiance. They're a battle-tested OG team. We've seen the Titans throughout the years get better as the season progresses. I like OG winning in Defiance on Friday. I think OG is going to run the table in the WBL. I, I think the winner of this, as Todd said, is in the driver's seat. But also, guys, this matchup could also serve as a district finals preview sure. at Ohio Northern University with, o, with uh, OG now Division Two and how the uh, districts are aligned now. Defiance will come down as opposed to going up as they had in years past up to Toledo Central Catholic where they had played yes. the likes of Toledo Wade and also uh, you know Toledo Scott, Rossford, those type of schools. Now they're coming south. They're coming to Ohio Northern. Could potentially be a, 
a district finals matchup. But I, I, this is this game, and then the Crestview Lincoln game are the two games that I've got circled for, as well as St. John Senior High, as far as three marquee matchups in our area. Well, and if I recall correctly, all ten WBL schools are in that same district this year. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah, um, and Upper you had Upper Sandusky and Brian, Brian I believe yeah. it is. You, know, you brought up a good point, Mark. I, I think if I have to pick one for OG Defiance, I would go with OG as well. I think a nice win, obviously, against Shawnee Friday. But I think Saturday we learned that the Titans uh, have some good potential because they played very well against Lima Senior throughout a long stretch of that game. The Spartans did overwhelm them and pull away at the Supreme Court. But I think games like that help you get better mm -hmm. and instill some confidence to play on some level with a team of that caliber. So I think OG might have gotten a real shot of confidence and a, a boost for their season with this weekend's results. OG Defiance, one of a couple of games we've already talked about where the top two teams in the league are squaring off. We'll have it for you on the West Ohio Sports Network this weekend, along with this game that we're going to talk about when another example of two top teams in a conference meeting, Fort Recovery and Coldwater, both unbeaten in the MAC. Who do you like in this one? Well, I think it's clear that Fort Recovery's got the momentum and the win last week over Versailles really put the target on their back, though. But uh, I, I got to go with Fort Recovery in this one. Uh, a chance to build off that win with Versailles last week. I'm going Fort Recovery as well, and uh, their defense is what has impressed me most, guys, this year. And then it just stapled it for me. Last Friday night, Justin Arns was held to just four points. Um, he fouled out, and the uh, team, Versailles as a team, was 7 of 19 from the line in that matchup. And if you want to win the MAC, you've got to be able to make your foul shots. And conversely, Fort Recovery went like 18 to 24 from the stripe as well got the win in overtime 54 51 that might be the biggest turnaround of a team from last year to this year and what chris guggenbiller has done year one to year two getting those athletes into this program as much as i respect for recovery i'm going with coldwater in this match but i like the size and the athleticism the cavaliers can present i like the way that coldwater has kind of found a way to win they've got a lot of momentum they're playing with a lot of confidence right now i think the cavaliers are going to get this victory like you, Mark, I think that this game comes down to Andy Brunette and how if he's able to establish his presence in the post, I don't know that Fort Recovery has somebody that can match up with him. But Fort Recovery does get up and down the floor very well, and they're athletic from what I've seen in person out of them so far. So I think this could be a really interesting game. All right, let's move on now to the NBA. Any concern with the Cleveland Cavaliers completely laying an egg against Golden State the other night on a big stage? I think you have to be concerned on some level because really the, the matchup with Golden State or San Antonio, take your pick, is really all that matters. Even with the Cavaliers' problems, I think they should be able to get through the East. Uh, but, you know, it's one thing to lose. It's another thing to get dominated and get eviscerated and get embarrassed and get shown up, and that's what happened you got to wonder where their head will be later in the season when they might see Golden State again. I, I think that this could lead to some kind of panic-induced move by Dan Gilbert. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they find a new coach uh, before the end of the year at the All-Star break, something. LeBron's going somewhere? <laughs> well played. Uh, LeBron doesn't like Coach Blatt anyway. LeBron's uh, the coach. There's, yeah, right. But there's he, here's my move. bold prediction. Golden State will not make the NBA Finals. You're going with San Antonio? I think Golden State is in very much in danger of burning themselves out. You're talking about a team that's coming off of the NBA championship last year. They went all the way to the finals. They played a lot of basketball games a season ago. They're a younger team that maybe doesn't understand how to pace themselves. I think they're going to be in trouble come April and May. I think San Antonio is going to beat them. I, I really like San Antonio, too, and I don't know that I'd pick that at this juncture, and, and, and but I, also, I see where you're you, going You've got a that. young coach at the helm of Golden State right now right. With, with the situation with Steve Carr. So how much Luke Walton is able to play that and, and get will have his team ready come the playoffs, I think that's something to keep an eye on. Hey, Luke Walton, friend of King James, he might be the next bench boss in Cleveland. You never know. And plus, what happens if Steve Kerr comes back? Now? Yeah. Does yeah. that change the whole dynamic, even though he's the championship coach? You're right. It's not a fait accompli for Golden State, especially with – San Antonio's pedigree and ability to know what to do in the playoffs. I think the Cavs are going to make some moves. You know, I think Mozgov has been talked about being on the block. I think for the right price and right piece, J.R. Smith could be moved. Um, you know, those two guys right there are two that I could see potentially being moved around and, and outside of Cleveland. And those are two guys they and picked Tristan up midseason last yeah. year. They made right. some moves last year that kind of put all the pieces together. So I, I wouldn't be surprised they make moves either. And it wouldn't surprise me to see a Tristan Thompson move as well, guys. It just seems like 
him and Kevin Love, they cancel each other out to an extent. You got one that can play offense. You got one that can't play offense. You got one his forte is defense. The other one doesn't really play defense either. So you know, you canceling each other out. You'll move a piece. Tristan, thanks for everything you've given, but you're going home to Canada probably. I mean, and that's a valid point, but it's a lot easier to change a coach. It is. And they could do that tomorrow if they want to. I, I don't rule out any player moves, but I think making the coach move could send the message that needs to be sent, and it would be very easy to do. Well, I mean, his Blatt's boys were there the other night, and we all saw how well that went for him, you know, <laughs> yeah. all knuckles deep and everything. Yeah, we saw. Interesting that you say that you don't think Golden State's going to make it to the finals because I had that thought when I was just thinking about no matter what the Warriors say, I think they're chasing that Bulls win record. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing about the, when the Bulls won the 72 games, that was the first year Jordan was back. They didn't have the deep playoff run the year before. They were a rested Bulls team. Now, and I'm agreeing and, with and the you. Previous, yeah. And the two yeah. years after that, their win total went down each of those years. They sure. lost in the conference semis to Orlando, by yes. the way, 95. Yeah. Right, Jordan so is it really going to matter whether they get the win streak or not, but is it something that they're going to exert themselves for and then not be fresh for the playoffs? Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, these are professional athletes, but just something to keep in mind. All right, let's close with the NFL Championship Sunday coming up. Brady Manning again for I don't know how many times in a 17th row. 17th or something 17th, like that. 17th, I yeah. think it is. And then they're, only, got, they're two and two in the playoffs against each other. Yeah, so this so is So this nice will prove who's the greatest quarterback yes. of all time. This is a nice rubber no. match. <laughs> and then we've got Carolina, Arizona in the NFC for both those teams trying to just get to the Super Bowl for the second time ever. Yeah, I, I, I have a weird feeling that the Broncos are going to beat the Patriots, and uh, I don't have any real empirical evidence. Uh, I, I think both teams are vulnerable in their own way. Uh, over in the NFC, I, I've gotten on the Carolina bandwagon here of late. The, physically, they are very impressive. They punch you in the mouth, and I think Cam Newton is a unique talent, and I think he can really win a playoff game or a Super Bowl by just – using his legs you know quarterbacks in the nfl are coached not to run very much but when it gets to conference title time and super bowl time i can see superman taking off and making big runs and laying his body on the line because it's the super bowl or it's a championship game i really like carolina and the nfc i think something that's going to keep an eye on for the nfc game is the weather we're getting this week the weather we're supposed to be getting carolina's supposed yeah. to get it with a lot of the snow could be arizona is very much an indoor team carolina if they have to play arizona in the elements that might get a little bit of an advantage to carolina it might be fun to watch i really would love to see some snow in denver get a nice little snow game between the broncos and the patriots i think carolina is the most physical of the two yeah. in, in that regard uh in the nfc um, this Carolina, there's just something about them that, you know, I think it's, they're, they're kind of like the working man class team. Uh, and they're a group that plays loose and they're playing and they're having fun and it shows on the field. I like Arizona, but I think Carolina wins this game and something is, I just don't know what it is, but there's something with this Denver team and Peyton Manning right now, he's just going to manage the game. I, I, this is it for Peyton in my opinion. It just, it wouldn't see me, or wouldn't surprise me to see him playing. Uh, in Super Bowl 50 in two weeks. Sorry about your Chiefs. It happens. Yes. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, guys, and enjoy your games this week. We'll be right back here next week on another Press Row to help break it all down.